I'm Connor McCluskey. I'm CEO of BombBomb. We're a video email platform technology located here in downtown Colorado Springs. My name is Tammy Shaminsky and I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Insurance Technologies, the privately held software development company that provides technology products and services to the financial services industry. We've been in business for 12 years, five of those in downtown Colorado Springs, and we have grown from 36 employees who will be at 150 at the end of 2019. We began as a small startup technology company in October 1995, literally as five people sitting around a kitchen table with a dream. Today, we are a company of over 240 employees in the heart of downtown Colorado Springs at the Palmer Center. It is great seeing Altia, Formstack, and just all of the energy that the Catalyst Campus has brought to downtown. Retention and recruitment of employees is of the utmost importance, and being located downtown is critical to our success. Well, we've moved our company downtown because a lot of people ride bikes to work, and they wanted walkability to both parks, coffee shops, art theater, dining, shopping. The beauty of being located next to other tech companies in the downtown area is that you get to talk about your industry with people locally, to speak into those problems that are unique to our industry. We wanted to reside in the cultural and economic hub of the city. We love the synergy and camaraderie of the downtown Colorado Springs tech scene. It just breeds creativity. Yeah. So thank you guys for being here. Let's start with introductions. So who are you? What company are you running and for how long? Let's start with you, Dustin. Sure. Hi, my name is Dustin Sapp. I am COO of a company called Formstack. We've been here, uh, I think we opened our office about seven months ago. Uh, we offer online data collection and workflow for close to 25,000 customers across the world. We work with everything from small nonprofits to large medical practices from donation collection to patient onboarding to the NFL running contests. Uh, so uh, we've, let's see, we've been here for about seven months. We now have a whole like 30 people here that we've built out in about seven months. So Susan, we're ahead of our hiring plans. <laughs> <laughs> Connor McCluskey, bomb bomb. Um, yeah, we're a video email company. We're a big deal. Um, <laughs> That's a common theme. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a common big, theme. Big deal. Um, yeah, we uh, we have thirty eight thousand customers. Uh, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you said that, I was like, I got to beat Dustin. But uh, anyways, yeah, uh, love being here. Hey, I'm Ryan Lloyd. I started Echo Architecture here in Colorado Springs about 10 years ago. We are a whopping seven people and have 38 customers. <laughs> <laughs> And quick plug, we are hiring, so Ooh. shoot us your resumes. And it started with just you. Yeah, we've, we've increased by 700%. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, so let's start with uh, Dustin. This question is for you. you. You've been an entrepreneur. I know you've um, started uh, companies of your own. And here you are in Colorado Springs, just like everybody else's story. So you guys, um, you run a vibrant company, and um, you have a headquarters in Indianapolis. And when you guys were looking for a second location to, to have a, a second hub, you chose Colorado Springs. Now, some might not believe that location is really important when it comes to the, um, the tech industry. But why, why, how did you guys choose Colorado Springs? Um, what makes this culture a right fit for you for, in terms of you guys' work? Yeah, well, first off, we weren't looking for uh, another location, actually. Uh, we've, we've got about 60% of our workforce is remote. We've got folks in seven countries and 75 cities around the world. Um, and, you know, yes, Indianapolis is our hub, but we really only have maybe 20 people that come into an office in, in Indianapolis. Uh, so we're already bigger than the Indianapolis office, which is amazing. <laughs> um, 
I spent the first 20 years of my career in Indianapolis building and growing software companies uh, and was moving out here for personal reasons, for, for health and lifestyle reasons. Um, known the, the crew at Formstack for a long time and uh, when they asked me to come on and partner and, and help grow the firm, uh, I said, I can't, I'm moving to Colorado. I'm, I'm not gonna do it. Colorado's more important than work. <laughs> uh, and they said, great, open an office. Uh, and you know, sure, that's nice. We, we had a couple people here, um, but when my wife and I began really investing in the community. We, we did a scouting trip in February of 2017, and uh, the first person I connected with was Hannah Parsons. I think everybody in the room knows Hannah, um, and which means it was the perfect person to, to meet first. Uh, and the speed at which she got us connected, not only from a professional community standpoint, but uh, from a family community standpoint. We've got four kids from 15 down to six. Uh, and so the, how, the reality of how that took place, we saw a spirit in the city that we knew could really parlay into uh, kind of a great, vibrant work environment as well. Uh, so when, when we look at the access to talent, when we look at uh, kind of the authentic nature of the, of the city itself, uh, it, was a, it was a natural place for us to grow. It was a natural mm -hmm. place for us to, to hire executives when we're recruiting executives. Uh, we've actually said you can move to Indianapolis or Colorado Springs and yeah. you yeah. guess where they'd, where they'd pick. Yeah. Uh, and so it was just, it, it was natural. Um, you asked about the culture fit. You know, we are, our software product, interestingly, our, our customers are typically problem solvers. They are folks that just, they need to solve a problem, they find our solution, they use it in, in hundreds of different ways, thousands of different ways, and, and because of that, the folks we hire are typically problem solvers. They're mm -hmm. folks that roll up their sleeves, they dig in, uh, they get busy, uh, and we saw kind of a lack of pretentiousness in this town and in the talent that this town uh, produces that just fit our culture hand in glove and uh, we're thus why we're outperforming our hiring goals. That's great. That's fantastic. So questions for uh, Ryan. Uh, I'm trying to think back. We met, it would have been like four years ago, I'm thinking. I was this uh, young, struggling painter who I had gotten a big break, been invited to come do a residency at this uh, new co-working space downtown that uh, I was, was, had just been launched the year prior, I, the, the machine shop. And uh, I think the first day you taught me how to make a cup of pour over coffee. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I feel like since your work on the Wild Goose Meeting House, you've your company, since that time, about four or five years ago, you have just taken on substantial project after substantial project. You've grown as a company, you're hiring. Um, and and you've, you and uh, Valerie, uh, your wife, have also grown as cultural influencers in the city. You've uh, built and curated this wonderful workspace with the machine shop. Um, and I know that uh, the heartbeat of Echo Architecture is embodied in the name, uh, embracing innovation and history of place. Can you talk a little bit about why Echo is named Echo and why Colorado Springs was the place to execute that vision? Yeah, yeah, so the, there's the, the highfalutin answer of why it's called Echo, which I'll tell you in a second. The real answer is we live on Echo Lane. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded great. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> Appreciate but, that. <laughs> but the, uh, one, of, one of the definitions of an echo is something that goes out and comes back um, slightly different change through space and time. And um, our focus as an architecture interior design firm is, is almost 100% downtown, west side, Ivy Wild, urban areas, uh, either adaptive reuse of old buildings or infill of, of urban sites. So the context is, is hugely important and the idea of um, taking the space and time around that, that particular building or empty lot or tear down, whatever it is, um, and bringing it back in a, in a new and innovative way is, is what we really like to do. So. In the, in the context of Colorado Springs, I think there's three um, very, very strong and, and, and wonderful factors that the city provides. The first one, of course, is the environment, um, the natural environment. It's, it's a beautiful city. Um, the proximity of the mountains is incredible. The weather is great. It's rel you know, relatively flat, so you can ride your bike anywhere which, that you want until you hit the mountains and you can go mountain biking on just amazing trails, which is something I love to do. Um, so the amount of sunshine for solar and, and um, passive and active um, 
sustainable heating and cooling of buildings. I mean, it's, it's perfect um, for architecture, and it's, um, that's hugely important to our work. The second is the people um, and the community that everybody's talked about tonight. I mean, I've worked with a lot of people in this room, and to be able to, to, be able to influence the culture of a city is incredible, and to be able to work with people like Yemi and Abigail and um, you guys soon, and, and you too. <laughs> just, just a hint. One, one big um, happy family. <laughs> yeah. No, but, um, you know, we love, we, you know, you get to go, 10 years ago when I moved here, you couldn't, uh, hopefully this isn't offensive, it was very hard to find a cup of coffee that was drinkable. <laughs> and now we've got Wild Goose, and Loyal, and Blank, and Switchback, and all these places that I, and even, I sized the beam in Don's tiny, tiny house, which, so that's, that was all me. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, it's, it's amazing to be able to go to these places and, and meet these beautiful people that are affecting our community and, and be a part of that. And that's something that's really hard to do in a city like Portland or Austin or Seattle. So that, those opportunities are still here. And then the third one, I'm going to, you know, there's been a lot of warm fuzzies tonight. Um, our, our, our city's built environment is not great. And um, I see that as potential. So. <laughs> Um, as an architect, that's actually a bonus for us. So we get to, to dig into that. Awesome. Connor. Um, let's see. The f I first met Connor when you guys were still in old Colorado City. And that was the first time I'd walked into a company that I thought, gosh, this place is so cool. They, part of their culture is just they have fun to play. I mean, up to that point, you know, you, you read about it, you see it in other cities, and that was the first time I'd seen it come to fruition in that city. So you guys were kind of ahead, but you're also, you've also been a great success story in the, in the spring. So what is it about Bomb Bomb that is um, working well in the context of Colorado Springs, and what are some key opportunities uh, for our city to, for us to grow in the area of, of positive culture? Yeah, so um, we're in Old Colorado City and above the old Meadow Muffins, and so we were we we just kept on expanding, and then I started renting lofts in the in the top level, and you know with hot tubs in them and <laughs> leaking through, and it was crazy, and and so it's it's the, the we were not in the hot tubs. <laughs> Just to be clear, that sounded weird, didn't it? Okay, sorry. We had a leaking hot tub thing, this guy, it was all weird, destroyed a bunch it's of a computers. Um, <laughs> come work at Bob Bob with the hot tubs. <laughs> it's not starting the way I planned it. Um, so anyways, you know, it's a cool building, it's the old opera house, you know, brick, hardwood floors, huge windows, you can open them. And, you know, we were literally stacked on top of each other um, and in the hot tub. And uh, <laughs> Ryan couldn't resist. And, uh, and so, you know, we're looking around and, you know, as, as Ryan alluded to, there just isn't anything like that. The, like everything's been torn down or there just isn't anything cool. And so, you know, the first place we looked at, you know, the probably the most stodgiest conservative building in Colorado Springs, the Wells Fargo Tower, we walk in and I'm like, okay, CH2M Hill, old engineering place. And I'm like, well, this is not going to work. And, and so we go around and, and we're looking for stuff. And then we started looking up north. And everybody's like, it's what's inside and all this. And, and, and <laughs> it's what's inside your heart. Um, and so we go through and I'm like hitting my head like our employees are going to hate this. We're not going to be able to attract people. This sucks. I hate this. And I'm really pissed off and frustrated. And then I'm like, I just need to ask my people. So we sat around one day and we got a bunch of sticky notes and we said, hey everybody, you get two sticky notes. And what you need to do is say, what are the two most important things in a work environment that you want? And it surprised the hell out of me when, when they came back and number one was natural light 
And number two was access to coffee shops, restaurants, and walkability to parks. And I was like, we're moving into the Wells Fargo Tower. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and so for a building full of bankers and lawyers, they really love a bunch of young people like getting up. They're like, oh, you're going to floor seven or six, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Just because we have fun and invite you to have beer on Friday? Like, get over yourself. So, you know, and now everybody loves us and everybody thinks, you know, we're cool and they've, they've loosened up a little bit and and all that but um you know that 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 is the thing like people they you know we have windows all around 360 degrees there's not a bad view in our whole in, in all of our space and and our people love it any any lunch time you will see our people going to restaurants uh, coffee shops, hopefully not dist distilleries, but you know, <laughs> it's Afterward. happened. But it, 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 it's you know that's what makes this thing. You know, we talk about the future, and you know, I have a pondering window in my office, and it looks over the mountains, and I look down on the Olympic Museum. And I will tell you, I look at that darn thing almost every day, and there is this energy about, you know, people, it's, it's a little bit controversial because we spent so much damn money on that thing. And, you know, I've been here since 1998, and, like, they were talking, I remember them talking about how that was going to be developed back then, and that shit never happened. And, and... But it's really cool to see when one creative thing happens, yeah. it attracts creative people. Yeah. And, and when you have artists, when you have, it, I, I was in San Francisco last week and it's all about AI. I was talking to the PWC guys about this and they're estimating whether you're looking at the government or you know, private PwC consulting firms, 40 per, up to 40 percent of our jobs are going to be lost. Yeah. And what what does work and dignity do? It gives it gives people purpose. And when you focus on what the human value is, I believe every human being has intrinsic value. And when you unlock that. What you get is empath empathy, not always emotional intelligence, but like what can humans do that robots don't? It's creativity. That's good. Yeah. And so it is really awesome to see a creative thing, what, what you guys do, it started with you guys, but this building actually is this creative thing that is this like tipping point. We can all feel it. And it like makes a difference here. And so I'm excited about the future. I've seen the future and it looks oh, damn bright. Oh, come on. And, and <laughs> I'm excited to be a part of it. So, <laughs> Dustin, Dustin, same question. Uh, what, what makes you hopeful about the future in Colorado Springs? Why are you asking me to follow him? Because <laughs> I think you can do better. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. I want to make a crack about a hot tub time machine, but I'm not, I'm not going to. Will you repeat the question, please? Yeah, um, we've, we've talked about sort of uh, embracing innovation, uh, history of place. Uh, as you're looking ahead, um, out of this conversation we've just had, out of your company's trajectory thus far mm -hmm. in this city, what makes you hopeful? What is the one thing that you are most excited about in our city right now? Yeah, I, I think the... The thing that makes me most hopeful, but probably also most cautious, is uh, that the city will kind of maintain its identity. There's, a, there's a, an energy level here, there's a desire to grow, which is exactly what the city needs. I wouldn't be here if it weren't. Um, but you, you talk about the idea of buildings and space, you know, being kind of that, that tipping point. There's a quote, I, I don't know who to attribute it to, but it's something to the effect of, um, inspiring places create inspired people. Um, mm -hmm. I, 
I don't know about you guys, but like Denver is not inspiring to me. It's frustrating. Um, you know, all of these cities that, that are referenced, um, we often try to use them as watermarks and say, this is what we need to be, this is what we need to become. Mm. And in reality, that is the worst possible thing you That's can try word. to achieve. Um, yeah. Oh. So I, we're here because Colorado Springs wants to be Colorado Springs, and it wants to be that, that next stage of Colorado Springs. And so I, I hope that the folks that are in this room who are the ones that are kind of really mapping that out for the city, I hope you remember that. I hope you take that to heart uh, and, and don't try to emulate, but embrace what makes this place great. Embrace that quality of life. It's not 80-hour work weeks that build companies like ours. It's 80-hour work weeks, 100-hour work weeks that burn people out. Uh, what, what builds companies like ours are those inspired teams and inspired people. And, and our people are here because they're inspired by the community that's around them and the work that we're doing and the people that we get to work with, all that good stuff. So uh, please just, just don't get pretentious. All right. Ryan, you, you want, want to take a, a shot at, at this? <laughs> Same question. What, what is the single most hopeful factor for you? Yeah, the, the most hopeful factor for me is, um, is the people in this room and, and some people that couldn't make it. But, um, you know, I look at Yemi, I look at Brother, I look at Michael. Um, I know you guys are expanding. Um, you know, artists in the machine shop that have gone professional. Uh, you know, I'm working on services expansion. We just finished Iron Bear's expansion. Um, all these places that I love, they're doing the next one, and then they're going to do the third one, and then they're going to take over, you know, all of that land that's not being developed. And um, the energy of the people that are that are sparking this renaissance in Colorado Springs is not going to yeah. stop. And um, and I get to be their architect. <laughs> so, um, I'm super stoked about that. Excellent. That's great. Right. Thank you. Any any final words? You guys good? You guys are a big deal. Thanks. Thank you, you guys. You are a big deal. Okay. <laughs>